Good morning, first grade. Welcome to this day. First grade, are you here? Yes, Mr. Coulter, we are here. The sun, with loving light, makes bright for me each day. The heart, with sacred power, gives strength unto my limbs. In sunlight shining clear, I am reverent. The strength of humankind has so graciously been planted in my soul that I, with all my might, may love to work and learn. Toward us comes light and strength. From us rise love and thanks. Well, today is a new day, of course. Today is Wednesday, which has a kind of a funny spelling. Wednesday, Wednesday, D-A-Y spells day, D-A-Y spells day, D-Day, Wednesday, September, Burr, burr, September 2nd, 2020. Wednesday, will you say the days of the week with me? Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. Back to Wednesday again. That's something you can practice saying with your uh, people who take care of you saying the days of the week so that you always know what they are. Yesterday was Tuesday, tomorrow is Thursday, and that's how we keep track of the days and the weeks. The weekend, of course, Saturday and Sunday. We need to add another little mark over here for the seventh day of school that we've had so far this school year. And we have the five there at the top, and then we have two more. Five and two make seven. I try to always do the things with me when I put my fingers up, and you put your fingers up too, because it's more fun that way, and you learn a lot more. Five days so in the, in the beginning, and then two more days, five and two, seven days. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Seven days so far. And now we have and my notes are down there, I'm looking at them. So now we have the body geography. Geography is usually the study of land and maps, but we have our, a map of our own body, and we start up here and say, head, shoulders, knees, and toes, knees, and toes. Head, shoulders, knees, and toes, knees, and toes. Eyes, and ears, and mouth, and nose. Head, shoulders, knees, and toes, knees, and toes, extra fast. Head, shoulders, knees, and toes, knees, and toes. Head, shoulders, knees, and toes, knees, and toes. Eyes, and ears, and mouth, and nose. Head, shoulders, knees, and toes, knees, and toes. Head, shoulders, knees, and toes, knees, and toes. Head, shoulders, knees, and toes, knees, and toes. Eyes, and ears, and mouth, and nose. Head, shoulders, knees, and toes, knees, and toes. Po, oh, I hope you're doing this with me and singing along. Po, oh, po, oh, he be coolly, va, va. Po, oh, po, oh, he be coolly, va, va. Po, oh, po, oh, he be coolly, va, va. Eh, my lama, 
Kokino. Waha Maka Waha Mana Mana Lima Maka Waha Mana Mana Lima Maka Waha Mana Mana Lima E Malama Kokino Ihu Nihu Leve Kokino Ihu Niho Leve Kokino Ihu Niho Leve Kokino E Malama Kokino All right we have, I'm going to say rubber, baby, buggy, bumpers a few times, and then I'm going to teach you a new tongue twister, which is even harder. Rubber, baby, buggy, bumpers. Say it with me. Rubber, baby, buggy, bumpers. 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 <gasps> Oh, I think I messed that one up. One last time, nice and slow. Rubber baby buggy bumpers. Now, the next one goes like this. It's a story about a person cooking, and her name is Betty Botter. Betty Botter bought a bit of butter, but she said, this butter's bitter. If I put it in my batter, then my batter will be bitter. So, Betty Botter bought a bit of better butter and she put it in her batter and her batter was not bitter. Betty Botter bought a bit of butter, but she said, this butter's bitter. If I put it in my batter, then my batter will be bitter. So Betty Botter bought a bit of better butter she put it in her batter, and her batter was not bitter. One more time. Say it with me if you can. Just try. Betty Botter bought a bit of butter, but she said, this butter's bitter. If I put it in my batter, then my batter will be bitter. So Betty Botter bought a bit of better butter, and she put it in her batter, and her batter was not bitter. Bitter. I will write that one down for you and post it along with this video on my website. And that's colterconapacific.weebly.com. And now we have um, something else to do. Oh, guess what? I have a surprise for you. I have a guest today, and it's Auntie Jackie will be along later, but I have another guest for you. And I will point the camera toward the door. And you, he's a masked man, as you can see. Good morning, Uncle David. Good morning. Good morning, Mr. Coulter. I will step back from the camera so that we don't have to wear masks. And you can say hello to the first graders. Maybe if you're both in camera and we can say, we can say namaste to each other from there. Namaste. namaste. Oh, good morning. Thank you. Good morning, first grade. Oh, wow. I cannot wait till we're back in school in person, but this will have to do for now. Um, I came here to your class today to teach you a few things and give you some exciting um, activity to do in your house. All right, so why don't you, wherever you are watching this activity or watching this video, um, I'd love for you to stand up with me and join me in a little warm up exercise. I know you've been sitting down, it's early in the morning, and uh, I want you to get a little bit of space and we're gonna do um, a series of star jumps, all right? Now, a star has five points. So here, one hand is one point, one hand's another point, one foot is a point, another foot is a point, and my head is a point. So we're gonna do some star jumps. So what I want you to do is make sure you have some space in your house or your room, make sure you're very safe, that you're not gonna kick anything over or knock into anything. And if you have a sibling, maybe make sure you guys have enough distance between you two so that you can spread your arms and your feet. And so a star jump is very simple. It's just like this. You jump with your hands out, and then you jump back in. Can you do that? Can you jump out and then in? Mr. Coulter can do it. 
Can you show Mr. Coulter? Perfect, good work. So let's do 10 star jumps together in a row. So it's gonna go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten together, okay? Ready? And Mr. Coulter, are you gonna join us too? Okay, I'm just trying to see if I can, maybe you can move over time that way and I can leave over here. So we'll, we'll do this together. We'll do star jumps together. Okay. Ready? And begin, ready? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. Very good job. Very good job. So, I have something very cool I want to show you. I have an experience this summer that I think you all will enjoy. And so, if you'll give me one second, I'm going to get a video for you of something very exciting. I want you to tell me if you know what's going on in this video. I wonder what it will be. Uncle David, I know that Uncle David travels far away from Hawaii in the summertime sometimes, and he's done it for many years. And while he's getting that ready, I'll just, um, I'll give you another hint. He always brings back something good to eat. And it might surprise you what he does in the summertime, traveling far away. Okay, so in this video, I want you to show me, I want you to see if you can think about what's going on in this video and when we meet back together in person, we can have a little conversation about it. But I think you'll find this video is very, very interesting. Tell me if you can see what is happening in this video. Can you see that? What is happening there? That looks like some fish jumping up the David. And what is what is that? That that looks like a big animal. Is that a cat? No, Uncle David. Is that a dog? It's a little more like a dog than a cat, I must say. I cannot imagine a cat swimming in a river. But I think it's a big brown bear. It is indeed. That, my friends, is a brown bear. And it's interesting that we're talking about a bear because I see something on the wall here that also begins with the letter B. A B starts with the letter B, and a bear starts with the letter B. So what we're gonna do today for our next activity is we are going to do some bear walks. We are going to walk like a bear. And so to walk like a bear, all you need to do is put your hands on the ground with your feet. And this is a bear walk. And you can bear walk all around all around. So go ahead and try bear walking right where you are in your house. Mr. Coulter and I are going to bear walk together. Very good. So I have a challenge for you. Here's what I'd like you to do this week. Every one of you at your house can you bear walk into every room in your house? So my challenge to you is to bear walk from your bedroom into the bathroom or down the hall or into your parents' room or into your siblings' room, getting their permission, of course, into the kitchen and through every room in the house. 
Now, you don't have to bear walk outside unless you choose to, and if it's safe, you can. But I want to see if you can bear walk through every room in your house. And I can't wait to hear about how this challenge went. Anyway, thank you and have a good day. Bye. Thank you so much, Uncle David. That's a great pleasure to do that together. So fun to have visitors. And Auntie Jackie has arrived while you were with us. And so I will we'll watch Uncle David go. Bye, Uncle David. Oh, oh, here comes Auntie Jackie bear walking. Where's my fish? Very I'm looking good for my fish. Who knew that grown-ups did such things, yeah. huh? Looks like there is some water dripping off of that flower. It is so wet from the water, isn't it? I'll use your stool if I may. Please do. Thank you. Good morning, Mr. Coulter. Good morning. Good morning, first graders. That was fun doing the bear walk. I feel pretty rejuvenated. How about you? Wow, now I can see the letter B behind me. And V. So I brought you in something that also starts with a B. And that may need a little description because you're remembering that this might be a flower. Look at that one, it's so big. And this one might be a flower. And it's much smaller, isn't it? But before it becomes a flower, it's a bud. So a flower bud is something it starts with the letter that you're learning, bud. And before it opens into a bloom, it's a bud. So here it's blooming. And here it's a bud. Same flower, same, you know, from the same plant. So a bud and a bloom are a B word that you can think about. And I'm going to add this to the flower collection. Looks like Mr. Coulter does already have a white flower that resembles the white flower I just brought in. Yes, I saw them sitting outside the office yesterday and I thought, oh, that would be a great addition to my, oh. to my collection. I'm so glad you brought another one. Well, you can count on me always bringing you guys a flower. Okay? If you might remember that that's something my daddy taught me. Yeah, right. So it's really good to keep our traditions with grandpas and grandmas. And this one belongs to a plant that um, I dug out of the ground yesterday with Auntie Cheyenne. We'll tell you about that another day. But this is a flower in bloom, and originally had a little bunny. Cool. Yesterday we talked about um, your garden box. If you didn't get to come yesterday or you forgot, I brought the box back. The box might also sound like the letter B, B because it is. This is the box for my garden materials, and Auntie Cheyenne made this box for me. You, some of you know Auntie Cheyenne because you've done aftercare with her in enrichment. So my box has got all my stuff inside. And today I'm gonna to show you the first step that I want us to follow in the box. With the box, wow, I got water on this chair. The box is gonna keep all that stuff that you had which we sent home. And today I think this would be a really good day to get started looking into it. So in your box, you should have one of these small boxes that we sent home in a paper bag. And in your box, there's a bag a bag of soil. And what I want you to start with today is to practice, let's get you, let's get your lid too. So you have a, a lid and it, may, it could be bigger plastic, but it, what it needs to do is it has to fit underneath your flower container so that when we water this, the water comes out through the bottom holes and drains into this lid. We gave you a bag of soil. Now you can just watch me right now, okay? And you can do this afterwards because I'm going to move through it and then I'll give you back to Mr. Coulter. But this could be your homework. This could be something you do a little later today. Bag of soil, small box, and the lid. So I'm going to um, put the soil. Hmm, how do I do this? I'm going to put the soil in the container. Opening up the bag. Now this could get a little dirty, so you're going to find like maybe that. The, um, like put a piece of paper down or go outside 
go somewhere where you might be able to, so you're gonna s be careful, you might use a spoon or you may spill it like when you're trying to get the last of the cereal out of the cereal box, if you eat cereal. So you can use a spoon, you can pour it, but if you're careful, you won't make a mess. This is very dry soil. I bought it and it was drier than I'm accustomed to, so I'm gonna press it in a little bit to tap out all the air holes. I'm gonna tap, 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 give it a slight fist bump, gentle fist bump, a little more soil, because it settles. There's all these air holes in there. And when you put the seed in, you don't want air holes, because they're like, they would make a channel. If, if the seed, we're ready to go into the soil. And the soil had a few air holes in it, like a little air channel there and a little air channel. The seed might fall down and go too far down. So when you do the fist bump and the gentle tap, 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 you're gonna shake out all those air bubbles. So that's the first thing you're gonna do to get ready. Tomorrow we'll talk about the rest. But you're gonna go tap, 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 tap tap and a gentle fist bump. Sometimes we've done this in gardening together with some of your kindergartners came in. And then what we have is the soil and it's ready. There is, the soil is not falling out, it's not over the top, but there's actually a small edge, a small lip. If I put my finger in it, there's just a little edge. This small edge and this small lip is for us to be able to water the plant and that the water won't spill out, that it just the water has a settling place. So today I want you to do that tap, 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 and get your soil in your cup. It's dry, it will settle. And get your, and if you don't have that plastic lid today, go looking around in the recycle or go look into the trash or somewhere that's okay to look. You may have an old plate in the house or ask to borrow a plate to catch the water. And this is going to be getting ready for our seeds. So eventually that our seeds will be able to have buds and bloom and um, offer that to the bees maybe. You got that? So uh, the first step was get one of these lids. The second step is to get your box and your bag and find a place to work and fill it. Tap, 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 and a gentle fist bump. All right, eventually we'll get some blooms out of this because I gave most of you guys pea seeds. Get those pea seeds ready. Good to see you, first grade. Good to see you, Mr. Coulter. Thank you so much, Auntie Jackie. Good it's to always see you, Mr. Steve. <clears throat> All right, and I've got a little bit to clean up. It's so okay, I will just start talking. All right. So as you saw, first grader, we first graders, we have A and we have both the B and the Q, and there's a Z way down there as well. And the A is the first letter of the alphabet, and the Z is the last letter of the alphabet. And let's just start with Z, since we haven't talked about that hardly at all. And Z is just three straight lines. So you can have a pencil, or a crayon, and a piece of scratch paper, or your notebook, and we will practice Z. The Z has a straight line here, and then it goes down an angle. Again, angle means not straight down this way and not straight down that way, but down an angle all the way down to there, right about underneath this. If this was dripping, it would land right on there. And then it goes back to here and lands right back at the end of that. So let's practice that a few more times. The Z goes like that, and then down, and then like that. Okay? So you may practice that at home a few more times, and then, once you've mastered it, we can add it to our B picture, because bzzz, I'm going to leave some space up here to write Queen B, but over here near the B, I'm going to make some small Zs because that's the sound it makes. And it's those wings making that beautiful buzzing noise, which to me is the sound of happy plants and happy buzzing bees getting nectar and pollen from the flowers. And of course, when they do that, 
all the flowers are so happy that they make fruit and seeds. So without these bees visiting, we would not have nearly as good crops of avocados and all the many things that the bees visit. I also would like to demonstrate the cue. And the cue, because we have our cue right here, this is another letter you may practice. And I always put a U right next to you. You see, I <clears throat> snuck a little U-shaped flower next to the Q because Q almost always has a U. And I even put a little temporary U on my, next to my Q's there. <clears throat> the lowercase z is one of those children that looks just like its parent, but not the Q, no. And the B is a mix. We'll get to that in a moment. So the Z is like that. The Q is just a big O with a little line right there for the stinger off to the side in this case. That's the Q, and you may practice that one. And then lastly, I hate to give you all these letters at once, but you know, why not? We're learning fast, so we may as well keep practicing. The lowercase b is a great example of a letter, the lowercase letter, that looks quite a bit like its parent, but not quite the same. There's very, there's a lot of similarities. They're so much the same, it's just missing this top part, which kind of reminds me of a child that hasn't grown up yet. So we've got the Q. I'm not even going to make this lowercase Q right now. We've got the Q and the Z and the B, all of which I'd like you to practice. And I think you practiced already the B, and so we can put that right in our main lesson book, just like this, right in your main lesson book on the next page. You don't have to do it right now. I will, you can find, you can, you can do that later. For now, I would like to though start a new story to tell you. So we had the queen bee, before that we had the star money. Oh, and we, I did want to remind us of the, the bee who lost its buzz from the book that I read yesterday, which I will continue reading after this lesson. So this story is called The Bremontown Musicians, and it goes like this. Once there was a donkey, and the donkey had grown so old that he was not really fit for any work anymore. And the farmer who owned this donkey did not think that he should have to feed this old donkey anymore, even though he had given his service for many years and pulled things around, pulled wagons around, and all kinds of different things for the farmer. <clears throat> so he was thinking to himself, that farmer was, how much money could I get? for the skin of that donkey. <clears throat> the donkey could tell that this, there was not a good wind blowing, so he decided that he had better set off on his own and see what he could make of himself. So he wandered away from the farmer down the road toward the town of Bremen, with the idea in his mind that he could become a town musician. Well, by and by, he came along to a dog. The old hound was lying there, yawning away, lying in the road, as dogs sometimes do. What's the matter with you, old yawner? You yawn like you're ready to fall asleep. Well, said the dog, I've gotten older, and I can no longer hunt for my farmer. My hunter farmer friend has had me for many years, but he has been beating me and beating me because I cannot run. And I have left because I know not what to do, but now I do not know how to earn my bread. So what shall I do? The ass said, well, you could come with me to Brementown. I will play the lute and you can play the kettle drum. The hound consented and off the two of them set. Well, by and by, along they came to a cat. And the cat was lying on the side of the road. And the ass said to the cat, Why is your face looking like three rainy days in a row? 
You look so sad, I don't know what to say. And the cat said, well, <clears throat> I'm older, and my teeth have been worn down to stumps, and I can't really catch mice anymore. And my mistress was going to drown me. So I don't know what to do. Good advice would be very dear. The ass said, well, you know about nocturnal music, music at night. And so why don't you come along with us to Bremen Town and we will become town musicians. The cat consented to the plan and off they set. Well, along they came to another farm and there at the top of the barn door was a rooster. And he was crowing with all his might. The ass said, what is wrong with you? Why do you crow as if trying to get your crow down to the marrow and bone? Well, said the rooster, there are fine guests coming to supper this Sunday and the mistress of the house has told the cook to chop my head off and make me into soup for Sunday dinner. And so while I can, I'm crowing with all my might. Well, you sound like you have a good voice, said the ass. Why don't you come along to, with us to Bremen Town and become a town musician with the rest of us? The cock consented to the plan and off they set. Well, they could not make it to Bremen Town in one day, and so they had to stop by the edge of a forest. And by the edge of the forest was a very large tree. And so each found themselves a place to sleep according to his nature. The cat climbed up into a lower branch, the rooster flew up to the top, and the hound and the donkey lay down at the bottom. But the rooster, before going to sleep, looked around in all four quarters and saw, off in the distance, a little spark of a light. And so he called down to his friend's friends. There in the distance is a house. I recommend we go and see what is there because the pasturage here is poor. The dog said, well, a little meaty bone would be quite welcome, so I accept your offer. Let us go. And so they followed the light with the advice of the rooster all the way to a little house of a, a little cottage belonging to some robbers. The robbers were there inside the house, and when the donkey, who was taller than the rest, looked through the window, saw an enormous feast with savory food and drink aplenty. So, the four of them consulted with each other and tried to figure out how it is that they could have enjoy that feast instead of those robbers. And they came up with a plan. <clears throat> and here's what they did. The donkey put his two forefeet on the windowsill from outside. It was dark outside, so the robbers did not notice them. The hound climbed upon the donkey's back. The cat climbed upon the hound's back. And the rooster sat upon the head of the cat. And I have some special guests to come and help me with what they did next. Uncle Steve and Auntie Emily and... and Auntie Chloe is, have joined us, and we will try to stay apart. And let's see, I was going to do, let's see, we have the, okay, I remember my part now. So the, the donkey and the hound and the cat and the rooster stood upon each other's backs, and to scare the robbers the way, they went like this. And the robbers ran away at such a racket and disappeared into the forest. Well, the four friends enjoyed themselves. Thank you very much, dear friends. The robbers enjoyed themselves very The animals enjoyed themselves so much around the table of the robbers and ate up all the food and drink. Well, the robbers, after consulting together in the forest for a while, the captain of the robbers sent one of the men back to the house to find out what had happened because they assumed it was some kind of spirits or ghosts coming to scare them away. Well, one of the men sneaked back down. He opened the door. The animals had all gone to sleep because they were tired for their long walk. The cat had curled up next to the warm hearth. The rooster sat upon the roof of the cottage. The hound lay down behind the door. 
And the donkey found some straw out in the yard. The robber crept in through the front door and could not see a thing because they had extinguished all the lights, the candles that they used for lights. The robber found a match and looking around toward the hearth saw, thought he saw some coals still in the fireplace and he leaned himself down to set the match upon the coals. But what he did not know was that the coals were really the eyes of the cat reflecting the moonlight. And as he stuck the match into the cat's eye, the cat awoke with a start and did not appreciate that joke and jumped up at the robber and hissed and scratched at his face. The robber screamed and ran for the back door, whereupon the dog had awoken and bit him in the leg. The, do the robber now limping out the door ran as fast as he could, but the donkey saw him and gave him a swift kick, knocking him clear across the yard. The rooster had awoken at the same time was going, And the robber ran back and told his comrades that there was a terrible witch sitting by the fireplace who had scratched his face and spit at him. And that there was a man with a knife behind the door who had cut his leg. And that outside there was a monster with a club who had beaten him with a club. And up on the roof sat a judge who said, bring the knave here to me, bring the knave here to me. And so the robbers never went back to their cottage. And our four friends decided that they had a good life right there in the cottage and never did try their hands at being Bremen Town musicians. So it is, and so it was, and so it shall be. That's the story of the Bremen Town musicians. I love that story. So thank you for listening. And I will read the next chapter now, even though I hate to heap one story upon another, I will read another story. I will read the, continue on with the alphabet, how Pinecone and Pepperpot, with the help of Tiptoes Lightly and Farmer John, learned Tom Nutcracker and Juneberry their letters. And that's a funny way of saying that. We usually say taught. But you can say learned, it turns out, if you look that one up in the dictionary. It turns out it is still correct, believe it or not, even though it sounds like it's not. All right, chapter four. A is for dressing up as alligators. Running River likes to run through Farmer John's land. After tumbling down the snowy mountains, it wanders dreamily through his fields and meadows before entering the shady forest. Tiptoes and the children followed the gnomes to the riverbank. You have to sit on this log, said Pinecone. Tiptoes has to sit with you. We'll be back in a minute. And they went behind a clump of reeds. Tom and June heard muttering. The reeds swayed back and forth. Now and then one of the others said, oh, Watch out! Mind where you put your foot? Or, for goodness sake, be careful of your tail. What are they doing, whispered Juneberry. Tiptoes shrugged and shook her head. Here we come, called Pepperpot. Are you ready? Yes, shouted Tom and June. We're ready. Pinecone and Pepperpot waddled out from behind the clump of reeds. They were dressed in green alligator costumes. Ta-da! cried the gnomes proudly. Tom and June giggled. What are you doing? asked Tiptoes, scratching her head. It's the first letter of the alphabet, said Pinecone. See, we're a a a alligators. A is for alligator. You told us to show Tom and Juneberry something that starts with the letter A. You can't do it like that, said Tiptoes. You have to show them the shape of the letter, too. We do, said the gnomes. Of course, said Tiptoes. Otherwise, how will they learn to write? Oh, said Pepperpot. We didn't think of that. What do we do? Simple, said Tiptoes. Both of you stand on your hands, bend at the hips, and put your feet together. Then make sure the tips of your alligator tails touch. Do what, cried the gnomes. Pinecone and Pepperpot had a hard time doing what Tiptoes said. Tom and June had to hold them in place while they were balanced, until they were balanced. The children stood back and looked. Yay, cried Tom and June laughing. You look super. 
That's the letter A, said Tiptoes to the children. Now draw it in your books. Tom and June drew the alligator gnomes in their sketchbooks. It took a while. Please hurry up, said Pepper Pot. His face was all red. My arms are killing me, said Pinecone. Whose ideas was this? His face was all red, too. Yours, said Pepper Pot. You said to make alligator costumes, said stop wriggling your legs. I'm not wriggling my legs, said Pinecone. You're the leg wiggler. You're making my knees wobbly. Finally, the gnomes fell over. Oof, said Pepper Pot. Oof, said Pinecone. Tiptoes ran over and picked the gnomes up. She dusted them off and helped them out of their costumes. The children showed the gnomes their drawings. That's a lovely alligator, said Pepper Pot, but I can't see my face. Mine neither, said Pinecone, except for my nose. Was my nose really that red? Even redder, giggled Juneberry. Where else can you find a letter A, Tiptoes asked the children. In a tent, said Juneberry, drawing a picture of a tent. Or an A-frame cottage, said Tom. A friend of my dad has one of those. He drew a picture, too. It's also in our legs, said Pinecone, jumping out wide and standing firmly on the ground. And in our hats when they stand up straight, said Pepper Pot, making his hat stand up straight. And in our hearts when we open up to the world, said Juneberry, holding out her arms. That's right, said Tiptoes, and in our hearts too. Chapter five, B is for bears and bees. Pinecone and Pepper Pot were sitting on a huge rock in the sunshine. The birds were twittering in the trees and the chipmunk family was gathering nuts for winter. Over by Soggy Mire, they could hear a Canada goose honking as it came into land on the water. But the gnomes didn't pay any attention to what was going on around them. They were planning their next lesson. B is for bear, said Pinecone, but I'm not getting dressed up as a bear. Being an alligator almost killed me. Me too, said Pepper Pot, and it took hours to sew the costumes. The gnomes thought a bit. Hmm. What if we could get a real bear, said Pinecone, the tip of his hat suddenly lighting up, forgetting the letter B. Oh, uh, Pepper Pot put, put, rubbed his hands with glee. If we had a real bear, Tom and June would never forget the letter B, he said. What a surprise they would get. Two days later, Pinecone and Pepper Pot were trying to get a bear to stand on one leg. The bear was doing his best, but having a hard time. The gnomes had hiked all the way to the snowy mountains to fetch him. He only came when they promised to give him honey. No, 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 said Pepper Pot. You stand on one leg and bend the other round and touch your toes and uh, hold your arms round a uh, bit sideways and dip your head down a bit. The bear tried and tried, but kept falling over. Finally, he got it. Yay, cried the gnomes applauding. Now where's my honey, said the bear. Only after the lesson, said Pinecone. You just gave me a lesson, said the bear. That wasn't a lesson, said Pepper Pot. That was practice for the real lesson with Tom Nutcracker and Juneberry. Who are they? asked the bear. Can I eat them? No, said Pinecone, only honey. You can only eat honey. Ah, now wait here and get them. I'll get them. And off he ran toward the farmhouse. Perhaps Tiptoes should come too, called Pepper Pot after him, sounding worried, just in case. In a while, Pepper Pot heard the children coming through the forest. The bear pricked up his ears and sniffed the air. He stood on one leg, got himself into the shape the gnomes had taught him, and waited. He felt foolish, very foolish, but he loved honey more than anything. Now remember, said Pepper Pot, wagging his finger, no eating children, just standing like we said. The bear grunted. He didn't sound happy. Tom appeared first and stopped instantly. Juneberry, who was busy chatting with Tiptoes, walked straight into him. Then she saw the bear, too. It was standing in the strangest position ever. It looked very weird. Ta-da! cried Pinecone and Pepper Pot. Here's the letter B. B for bear. Eek! squealed Juneberry. Yikes! cried Tom. A bear! They turned and fled through the forest, their knees pumping up and down like engines. Stop! Stop! shouted Pinecone and Pepper Pot. We're teaching you the alphabet! But the children didn't hear. They were running too fast. Where's my honey? said the bear, dropping down to all fours. I want my honey after all this hocus pocus standing funny stuff. So the gnomes led him towards a wild beehive in the forest, but on the way he spied Farmer John's beehives in a field. Oh, what's that? said the bear. I smell honey, lots and lots of honey. No, 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 not those ones, said the bear, the gnomes, but it was too late. The bear was already crashing through the underbrush brush toward the hives. 
He ambled to a beehive and knocked the lid off. Mmm, yummy honey, said the bear, biting into the honeycomb. The bees buzzed around the bear like crazy. They were mad, 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 but the bear had thick skin and thicker pelt and didn't much pay attention. He scooped out honeycomb until his tummy was full. Then he licked his chops and headed back towards the snowy mountains. Pinecone and Pepperpot looked at the broken beehive. Thousands of bees were flying everywhere. Now what do we do, said Pepperpot. He had to duck now and then to avoid getting hit by a bee. We'll have to find another creature that looks like the letter B. That's right, said Pinecone. He was ducking bees, too. We'll have to find another bee for Tom and Juneberry, but I don't know where we're going to find one. There aren't a lot of bee... There aren't a lot of bees around here. We looked everywhere. Yes, we have looked everywhere, agreed Pinecone, grabbing hold of his hat and knocking a bee as a bee knocked it off. Where there are no bees around here, I wonder where we're going to find bees. I have no idea, sighed Pepperpot, pulling his ear. If only there were bees somewhere nearby. The gnomes sat surrounded by thousands of bees and couldn't think of a single bee creature. They thought and thought and thought. Finally, the tip of Pepperpot's cap started sparkling. Wait a minute, he said, swatting a bee away. There are thousands of bees around here. Pinecone looked confused. Do you mean bees or, or bees, he asked. I mean bees and bees, said Pepperpot. A bee is a bee and a bee is a bee. Oh, you mean that bees are bees and bees are bees, said Pinecone? Of course, said Pepperpot, rolling his eyes. That's what I said. Let's get Tom and June very quickly. The gnomes found Tom and June sitting on the garden fence. Tiptoes sat beside them. Where's that bear? asked Tom Nutcracker. He looked afraid. So did Juneberry. Her eyes were big and round. Don't worry about him, said Pinecone. He's gone back to the snowy mountains. Why was he standing so weird? asked Juneberry. He was showing you the letter B, said Pepperpot. We trained him, but now we have a much better B altogether. Come with us. Bring your satchel too so you can draw them. The gnomes led the way to Farmer John's beehives in the back of the field. Bees were buzzing everywhere. There, said Pinecone, pointing, all those bees are bees. That's right, said Pepperpot. A bee is a bee because it's shaped like a bee. Whoever named them was really clever. Go over and draw one. But they look so angry, said Juneberry. There's a hive knocked over, said Tom. What happened here? Suddenly the bees started swarming around their heads. Ow, said Tom, getting stung. Ow, ow, screeched Juneberry, swatting her head. Run, run, cried Tiptoes. Run for the river. Tom and June ran down the hill towards the running river, a swarm of angry bees buzzing after them. They flung their arms about wildly, trying to keep the bees away. But the bees were stirred up. They hunted and chased them all the way to the river. Tom and June threw themselves into the water with a splash. They stayed underneath as long as they could. When they came up for air, the bees were going back to their hive. Sorry, said Pinecone, standing on the riverbank with his hat in his hand. Me too, said Pinecone, uh, Pepperpot. We're really sorry. You should be, huffed tiptoes, wagging her finger at them. Tom and June waded out of the river. They were not happy. They were soaking wet and sore from their stings. We'll come help you with your drawings after supper, said Pinecone. Promise. Definitely, said Pepperpot. But you'd better tell your dad that one of his hives was raided by a bear. That evening, Tom Nutcracker and Juneberry sat in the living room table, at the living room table. They had band-aids on their necks, on their faces, and on the backs of their hands. Pinecone and Pepperpot watched as they drew a bear standing in the shape of a letter B. Then they drew B's and B's, lots and lots and lots of them. I don't think I'll ever forget the letter B, said Tom, ruefully. Me neither, said Juneberry, and that, and not just because it's in my name. Juneberry. All right, that's good for today. Thank you so much for being here. See you tomorrow.